Borough President Donovan Richards outlined his vision for the future of Queens in his State of the Borough address on Friday. That's right. He highlighted plans for affordable housing, economic development, safer streets, tech innovation. And this morning he's joining us to talk about all of that and then some. So let's welcome to the couch Borough President Donovan Richards. Good, Good to morning. see you. Good to see you both. All right. Soccer Stadium. That is the big headline, Ooh, right? Yes. So let's get first and foremost how much it's going to cost and the timeline of it all kind of playing out. So it's about a billion dollars almost, but privately financed, which is the first we've seen, yeah. <laughs> uh, certainly in the state and city in a long time. Uh, and then we anticipate close to $6 billion of economic wow. opportunities over the course of the few decades. And affordable housing, 25,000 seat soccer yeah. stadium, which is slated to open 2027. Um, so I anticipate that we'll have young people with cleats on, playing on that field, and cooking soccer balls, and most importantly, we'll have NYCFC out there finally yes. playing in Queens and not at Yankee you know, Stadium. I, I, we had the mayor here on Friday. Yes, exactly. It's a good point. <laughs> and, and, you know, there are a few people that were saying, where are the folks who were currently working at Willits Point, some of those mechanics and so on, where are they going to go? Right. So there, that conversation, I'm assuming, and I have had conversations with the Economic Development Corporation on this. I know that they did pay out 45 of those businesses nearly a decade ago. Okay. So it is my hope that there is some sort of relocation plan yeah. and that we start that conversation again with them. I think every time I covered this last week, I made sure the first line of my story was, this is not using taxpayer money. Yes. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, when do public hearings get underway? Oh, the public hearings had got underway. I mean, well, let's we, start we off. We have more to do, right? No, no, no. We're at the final stage. So the city council approved last week. Yes. And then we will have uh, the mayor sign it into law over the course, probably uh, over the next 180 days. And then days. there's no more public input. No more public hearings. It's we are done. done. So okay. the soccer stadium is one thing, right? And that is huge news. Um, by the way, I don't like much sports, but I love soccer. Soccer's great. So there's that. Uh, but the casino is the other big story. Is that still happening? Are they happening simultaneously? What's the latest with that? Well, we're still awaiting the state <laughs> to actually yeah. announce who they're going to give licenses to. I do think it is a home run for City Field. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to just focus in on the casino. I think a lot of people focus on Steve Cohen's casino plan, but it's larger than just about the casino. It's the, the, the pieces that re revolve around having uh, Hard Rock Cafe coming, so an mm -hmm. entertainment hub there open space, redoing the seven train line. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many facets of the plan that are really good. The Queens Food Hall, yeah. which is something we negotiated, uh, speaking with uh, Steve, in, 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 the, in, in the case that he does get the, the actual license. Right. So we'll have street vendors who can be incorporated in that plan from Corona. So it's, it's larger than just about that, uh, but we'll see what happens next year. Is congestion an issue when you think about all of this redevelopment in that area? Well, you have a lot of public transportation. We have the LIRR, which is running 24 hours, seven days a week now. Mm -hmm. And you have the seven line. There really is no need to really drive into city field with what's happening. But in the case you do, you know, you will have parking. And if we figure that out with both the soccer stadium and the Mets, they will not play simultaneously. Uh, and they've worked those, those kinks out. Okay, you say that now. Until the, until the <laughs> Don't drive. Take the train. Take and, the train. And the affordable housing aspect is a huge component of it all, right? Obviously, you see what's going on in Albany right now with, with the good cause and trying to get more affordable housing done. It seems to be this big talking point back and forth about getting it done. The timeline of the soccer stadium, does that match the timeline of affordable housing? Well, this is happening. Uh, you know, the mayor, Mayor Adams, has been 100% committed to this project. Uh, the first uh, phase is already financed, so 880 <laughs> units are going up as we speak. Uh, we'll see the remaining balance of those units happen. Is there a and it is my hope that there's some stuff. Yes, it will be a city lottery, 15% set aside for formerly homeless families. Mm -hmm. So think about the poetic justice there, coming from a shelter and being able to live across the street from City Field and live next door uh, to Willis Point yeah. Stadium. And I'm sure people listening are wondering, how did they get their hands on those apartments? So what would that process be like? Well, you would go through the city's housing connect, and you a should lottery. do that from now, so right? And it's a lottery set aside. You know, there was a lawsuit around a lottery, so mm -hmm. I think there will be less of a community preference by the time we hit there. But we'll be pushing to make sure that the residents of, of Corona, East Elmhurst, and Jackson Heights have first dibs on these apartments. Yeah, we're talking about housing, and there's been this big issue with squatters recently uh, across the boroughs. We've kind of seen it kind of play out including in Queens, this Triple Crown Diner in Belrose where there were some squatters inside. Where do you see this going in terms of squatters and the law? Should they change? They should. They have to change it. I mean, and squatters, what I call them, these individuals, a lot of them are professional squatters. Yeah. They know what to look for. So I always tell landlords, if you are not 
home or your absentee landlord, make sure your grass is getting cut. Mm -hmm. They know there are key indicators they look for to target homes. So take care of your property, yeah. first off. And then secondly, of course, Albany and the city should look at mm -hmm. that law. It's, it's no reason that if you paid for a home, you saved up all of this money, that squatters should be able to come in and live and then take you to court right, <laughs> and have exactly. you arrested. Right. We got to talk about your birthday. You just celebrated <laughs> a special day. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. The big 41. And anniversary, by the way. Oh, uh, my 13th goodness. 13th anniversary. Oh. So I was born for my wife, but I will never forget the date. That, well, you... <laughs> I was born for yeah. Tamika Richards. Oh, there you go. April 9th. Okay. 41. 41. How's it feel? Wiser. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you celebrate? Uh, we went out to eat, um, yeah. and and I just got I got an evening off, which there you was go. great. That's you know that you was need the best way off. to celebrate with family. Uh, all right, thank you for coming in. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. Uh, God bless your wife. Put up with you. <laughs> God bless her. Great. <laughs> Richards, great to see you. Good to see you.